What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Coach Black, your internet relationship and breakup coach. Today's topic, if you are struggling to get your ex back, I want you to stop whatever you're doing and do this instead. Now, I want you to think about how you're feeling right now. Maybe you've been thinking about your ex for some weeks and you've attempted to reach out to them. You've called, you've texted and no matter what you do, they, they don't seem to be receptive. They're being cold and distant. And obviously what makes it worse is you feel like you've invested so much into this person, so much time, so much energy. And maybe there have been fights or conflicts in the past and you always seemed to get through everything together except what you're going through now. And so whatever that feels like emotionally, that pain, that uncertainty, the fear that you'll never be able to get them back. I want you to, I want you to compound that with a scenario where it's just been a long week, all right? Work is stressful. Your boss is being unnecessarily uh, demanding. Customers are impatient and again the week just doesn't seem to be able to get any worse so it's friday evening you decide okay i i just want to unwind i want to do something for myself i'm going to go to the grocery store and pick up a bottle of wine and just relax and just you know cast my cares away and you know have a good time so when you pull up to the grocery store there's no parking spots you loop around and you're trying to find something, but this is a very busy shopping complex, so it's tricky. And so just as you're about to give up and leave, you see someone approaching their car, right? They got their bags in their hand. They're kind of briskly walking and, you know, kind of rushing to get into the car. So you quickly pull up close to where the spot is so that you don't lose the parking spot. And so they get into the car and you're waiting for them to back out. But for some reason, it feels like it's taking forever. And so you're kind of looking over and kind of making sure just to see what's going on. And, you know, one minute seemingly turns into two and two turns into three. And you're like, at this point, starting to look to see if there's there's other parking spots. And slowly but sure, surely, this person eventually backs up. And they leave and so you take the spot and you're thinking like what was that about all right why did it take them so long to leave well there's actually a study and this is interesting because it'll tell you a lot about how your ex is thinking right now so there was a study that was done about this exact situation with i think 400 and some odd cards i'm going to leave the link in the description so you can look at it for yourself and what it showed was if you compare right, the time it takes someone to leave a parking spot when someone is waiting versus when there's no one waiting for the spot, it always took people longer to leave when someone was waiting. And this is weird, right? This, this sounds counterintuitive because you would think that, okay, if you notice that someone is waiting, then you would, you know, you don't need the spot any longer. So you would just back off and leave. But in every scenario, when someone's waiting for that spot, all of a sudden, now you got to go through your phone and see, you know, that email that you hadn't responded to. Now, all of a sudden, you want to text your best friend and you're looking in the mirror to make sure the makeup is good and, you know, whatever it is that you do. This phenomenon is called the corrupting influence of power. And it's just a weird thing about human nature is that whenever someone feels like they are in a position of power, a lot of times people tend to abuse that power. And it sounds weird to think about, but it is the truth. And I believe this is what that study illustrates. And so if you apply that to a breakup situation where in most cases, when someone is leaving you, they perceive themselves as higher value. Uh, there's there's some kind of discrepancy in the interest level, right? You're still interested in the relationship and they're not. So in that scenario, they have the power. 
And so most times when your ex breaks up with you, they are expecting you to chase them. They are expecting you to pursue them. And a part of them likes that feeling. Again, the corrupting influence of power. They like feeling like you want them more than they want you. They like to feel a sense that, you know, the breakup is hurting you. And, and it sounds weird, but Again, it bolsters their own self-esteem and makes them feel attractive and it makes them feel powerful. So if you think about the context of the title of this video, if you are struggling to get your ex back or to get them to give you another chance, you need to shift the way that you're, you're thinking about this completely. No matter how much it hurts you, no matter how much you want them back, you need to start thinking about this as they need to earn another chance with you. If you put yourself in a position because trying to get them back, struggling to get them back already puts you as a liability. It already puts you beneath them. So that context is already off. All right. If you have watched the videos on this channel, you know, there's always a, a layer of re-establishing with you that you are a person of value you will never never attract anyone who believes that they are better than you see human beings always do things that we perceive is in our own best interest so why would it be in your ex's best interest to pursue someone who is beneath them right the more you chase the more you long after and pine after them, you're pursuing them in the wrong context. And that's a loser's game because you're playing their game. I'll tell you a quick story, right? <clears throat> when I was younger, I used to have this uh, this video game. The, um, I believe it was a Nintendo. And one of my favorite games on a Nintendo was um, Donkey Kong. And I can't remember exactly how this thing goes, but you can play like single player and just go through the different levels by yourself. And I remember playing the game on the on difficult, right? And there was this stage where you were in like a go-kart and you had to kind of go through all these different obstacles. And so when you were on the hardest level, it felt impossible to beat this game. There was always different obstacles. There was different things. You had to hop over this. It was extremely difficult. And no matter how much I tried, I just could not seem to be able to beat this thing. And so one day I'm trying, I'm, you know, playing and trying to figure this thing out. And so I jump, I think B was jump. And, and what I found out was that if you tap the B button, right, what it did was you would just, it seemed like a glitch in the game. You would just hop like all the way to the top of the screen. And if you keep tapping, basically you were able to avoid playing the game. Essentially, you were able to avoid all the different obstacles by just kind of float floating at the top. And so I would do this thing. I was excited. I'm like, I'm finally about to beat this thing. And so when I got to the end, <clears throat> you know, I let I let go of the button and I came back down. And so you're just supposed to drive through the exit. And as I'm about to drive into the exit, I just kind of run into the, it just would not let me pass through. It was the weirdest thing, super weird. And so what I realized is, or looking back now, it's kind of funny. However, that glitch worked, whatever it was in that game, at the end of the day, I was still playing their game. There was likely maybe something I had to pass through that would make it correct. But at the end of the day, they wrote the rules to that game. And no matter what trick and tactic or thing I tried to do, I was still playing under their own script. And so I was never gonna win their game by putting in my rules to their game. Does that make sense? It's the same thing that applies when you're thinking about a breakup. You need to stop playing on your ex's terms, doing whatever it is they say or chasing them or trying to prove yourself. I've had people like you go no contact and you set a boundary and say, OK, well, you know, I don't want to be friends. 
until your ex starts texting you, and but you keep texting them back. You keep replying to their messages. You keep making yourself available to do whatever it is that they want. No matter how nice you are, no matter how friendly you are, no matter how emotionally available you are, chasing someone or being there for someone who is telling you through their actions that they don't want anything to do with you always makes you lesser than, okay? So you will never struggle to get your ex back if you allow them to come to you. On some level, you have to be willing to lose them, truthfully. On some level, you have to be okay with them not being in your life forever. And that's the most attractive thing that you can do because it finally puts you as an equal, okay? I am telling you the big core reason why people break up. I've talked to thousands of people. There's always a subtle perception that the person who left is better, more attractive. You can say, oh no, we're, we're, you know, we're just as attractive or I have a great job. It doesn't matter. It's all about perception. And the easiest way to see who is perceived as the higher value person Look at who is putting in most of the effort. Look at who is investing the most, the most time, the most energy, the most phone calls, the begging, the why don't you have time for me? Okay, It's always the person who's perceived as lower value. And a breakup is a tremendous opportunity for you to equalize things, for you to put yourself on the pedestal. Right? And no matter how much it hurts, it, it can be hurtful. It can be very challenging. But I'm telling you, if your ex feels like they have that power over you, they become like the person trying to leave the parking spot. All of a sudden, they got all these things they want to do. Right. So that they can exert that dominance over you. And let me tell you, think about how much worse it gets. And the study also shows this. If you pull up to that spot and you're waiting and you honk, uh, honk the horn, it makes it worse. They take even longer. So when your ex is saying they don't want to be with you and they don't want to talk to you and you're still sending messages, you're only giving them more energy, more power. And like I said, most people are going to abuse that. Anyway, if you have any thoughts, comments, drop them down in the comment section below. If you want to talk to me about your situation, click the first link in the description and I'll be happy to talk to you about it. Please do me a favor. If you enjoyed this video, like the video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the future videos that I put out. I truly do appreciate you all for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.